God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then in chapter 7, he goes into talking about him not being able to do the things he thought he could do, or that he should do. Verse 7, chapter, verse, chapter 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. He said, I'm speaking to those who know the law. You see, the law does not deliver us from sin. There's no way the power of the law can, there's no way you can get circumcised and that will break the power of sin in your life. That's just cutting away a piece of your flesh. Yes. That represented what Christ would do for us, though, at Calvary. He would bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Yes. Then we could receive that yes. and be dead to sin. Thank you, Lord. And live right. Glory. We can receive what Amen. Jesus did and live right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So glory. Hallelujah. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to, to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Now he's getting ready to go on to say, I, I, I find myself doing the things I don't want to do, and I can't do the things I want to do. Let's go, go on down and start reading the whole thing. Oh. Instead of reading through the whole chapter. Let's go down. Verse 23, I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members, in my body. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see, when you're in sin, you're in death. Yeah. That's right. So he's talking about a man trying to live for God under the law without Jesus Christ. He said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, only through Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. In other words, Jesus can deliver us from that. Yep. Je now, I hear people say all the time, well, even Paul couldn't live right. He was an apostle of God, and he could not do what's right. So we have no hope, right? That's right. We have to sin every day, right? No. No. That's what, no. That's what they teach. Yes, they do. We don't have to sin every day. That's right. No. Because Amen. we're redeemed, we're set free, we're made whole. We can crucify the power of the flesh yes. with the Spirit of God. Amen. The power of God. The Word of God. We need to be saying what the Word of God says. If some sinful old thing tries to rise up in you, we need to talk to it. Amen. We need to say, I'm dead to you. Yep. I'll not do that anymore. Right. I used to be like that, but I'm not that way anymore. Right. I'm dead to that. Jesus took that on Calvary. He bare my sins in his own body on the tree so I could be dead to sin. That's right. He bare my sickness. He bare my diseases. We need to be speaking to these things in the name of Jesus. Yes. We need to exercise our authority, our God-given authority over the powers of Satan. And we need, because Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. Yes. Amen. He came to set us free from it all. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We need to speak to every area of our life that's not yes. in line with the Word of God. Amen. If you have pain in your body, you need to be speaking to that pain in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Commanding it to leave in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is we need, good. We need to be Amen. speaking to our bodies. We need to tell our bodies that we have self-control. Right. That's right. Because God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power Lord, and love, love and sound, sound mind. mind. And the sound mind in the Greek is literally self-control. So don't ever say, I have no self-control. Because Jesus has shed abroad the self-control of His self-control in your heart. That's right. God shed abroad the spirit of His Son into our hearts. And we're, we've been given the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has given us... The agape of God, the love of God yes. has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we can walk in love. So I can walk in love. I can walk, I can walk in, love. in love. So I can forgive people. I can, I can forgive, forgive people. people. Because I'm supposed to forgive people. Even as God for Christ's sake Even as Christ has forgiven me. Has forgiven me. When God forgave me, God forgave me. He remembers my sins no more. He remembers my sins. So I can remember other people's sins no more. I can remember. I can forgive other people. I can forgive. Just like God forgave me. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus said, "Pray like this: Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses." As we forgive those who trespass against us. He goes on to say, For if we forgive not others who are trespasses, He will not forgive our trespasses. That's right. In other words, God forgives us as we forgive other people. Amen. Right. Amen. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, talking about the prayer of faith, and He says, As you stand praying, if you have all against any, forgive them, so that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses.
trespasses. So we need to forgive other people if we want God to forgive us. Amen. God wants to forgive us, but we need to forgive other people too. Amen. That's right. That's right. Getting kind of quiet here. <laughs> That's kind of hard, isn't it? Out there. Yeah. That kind of hurts, doesn't it? Out there. Well, that's good for us. That's right. Glory. Come on, Pastor. You know, Paul, Paul got off to the Corinthian church, and, and he, he, he upset them because he told them they needed to do some things. That's right. And finally he said in 2 Corinthians, he said, Now I wrote some things unto you that made you sorry. But that sorrow caused you to repent. Repent means turn away from what you were doing and do just the opposite. Yes. He said, in godly sorrow worketh repentance. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Yeah. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. So we should be sorry when we get into sin, but we should repent. <clears throat> we should let it work in us to repentance. That means turn away from that old thing and turn to God. And when we decide from our hearts and God knows our hearts, then God will take it away by His power. Amen. Then He'll give us the strength yes. to overcome and be wow. delivered and be set free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And who Thank the Son is set free is free indeed. Amen. Praise Amen. 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 Thank we you, Lord. We can be free indeed. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise, Praise, Praise you, Father. Glory to God. So Paul goes on here into Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And this is why it's so important to understand Bible words. Because the Lord told me a long time ago, He said, most Doctrinal misunderstandings are misunderstandings of Bible words. There is therefore now been no condemnation. Now this word condemnation, now it means feel guilty. But back when this was written, 400 years ago, or 2,000 years ago, it meant sentence of death. Or judgment unto death. That's right. Condemn means death. Condemnation means judgment unto death. And so what he was saying is, is there is therefore now no more judgment unto death to those who are in Christ Jesus. This word in is literally a Greek word in, in, and it means it's, it's talking, it's a positional thing. It's like you are in this building, but you're going to leave eventually, right? Come on. I hope you're going to leave eventually because we're going to shut the lights off and turn <laughs> all the air off. But... Those who are in, positionally in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You see, the wages of sin is death. It's always been that way. It always has been. It always will be. It's never, ever has changed. If you get into sin, God's no respecter of persons. If you do wrong, if you do evil, God will judge you for the evil you've done. And God's no respecter of persons. That's right. That means it doesn't matter whether you've ever asked Jesus into your heart or not. If you get into sin, you're a sinner. That's right. If you get into sin, you're a sinner. That's right. If you're living in sin, you're a sinner. You need to repent. You, you're not, no longer a child of God. That's right. I mean, some people don't like that. But in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, We should not forsake the assemblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but we should encourage each other to good works, especially right. as we see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, that's willful sin. We know we're sinning. We sin willfully after we've come to the knowledge of the truth. That's a person who is born again. Yeah. It says there remaineth no more sacrifice for their sins. That means the sacrifice Christ provided for you no longer remains on your life. But there's a certain fearful looking for as of judgment. In other words, we know that we're away from God because the Holy Spirit is dealing with us. That's right. He's reproving the whole world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. Right. Jesus came to set us free. Amen. He's dealing with every single person in the world. Because yes. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen, yes. amen. Thank you, Lord. It's the message we've heard from the beginning. God's always been like that. Amen. Yes. God's never wanted His people. Matter of fact, through the Old Covenant, He said, He said, I'm sick of your sacrifices and all these things. I want a real changed life. I want you to really seriously live for me. That's right. We need to really seriously live for God. Not just do, like, formal things to try to be Try to be righteous, but truly a heartfelt living for God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all God wants. Because we love Him. Praise Amen. Your Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do, and that is weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned or put to death sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the 
the Spirit. We can walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. Our flesh pulls on us and our spirits pull on us. We have both those things. You know, remember those cartoons that had a little devil on your one shoulder, an angel on the other shoulder? They're both telling you to do different things. That's kind of how it is. One's the flesh, the other's the spirit. But we get to choose who we follow. Amen. We get to choose whether we walk after the spirit or walk after the flesh. Every day. We get, to, we get that choice. Every day. It's a daily walk. The just shall live by faith. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Deliverance. It, today is the day of deliverance. Every single day. Glory to God. Why well, was that? Way. Well, it's a new day. Every day, when you wake up every morning, you need to, you need to commit your life to Jesus Christ. Every day. You need to say, Lord, I love you. I, I'm, in, I'm in love with you. I'm going to live for you today. I'm going to walk righteously today. And you know, you can walk righteously every day if you right. decide from your heart, starting out every day. Jesus would get up early in the morning. We need to be, do that. We need to get up early. In, I mean, I, I'm getting old, so it's easy for me to get up early. I woke up at 5 this morning, between 5 and 5.30. And uh, I, I was awake. But I started praising God. I said, praying. And the Holy Ghost, praise God. We just need to, we, I believe everybody should do that. We get up, Kathy and I sit and we spend usually hours in the Word every morning. Together. Every morning. And we get up early. I mean, we get up early. Sometimes a little earlier than others, but we get up early and do that. Sometimes it gets to be like 8.30 or 9, and she had made breakfast. Yeah, so we, we're in the Word, and she just, oh, i got to go make breakfast, you know. You know, there's other people besides just her and me in the house, too. So. Yep. We need to just follow God. We need Amen. to get hold of these things. Hallelujah. Follow God's direction. God's Word is good. God's Word is good. Hallelujah. We need, we need to be Thank followers you, of God. We need to obey God. We need to do what God has us to do. Yes. Well, basically, that's my message for today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory Thank Lord. you, Lord. Praise your Father. Praise and you're giving God praise and glory. Thank okay? Lord. Praise your Father. Glory Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Yeah. God is good. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve.